Now let's try to understand how the typical life insurance contracts are priced. First of all, this is an introductory chapter. We are not focusing uh, too much into uh, specific kind of life assurance policies and their pricing. That we will get into our in our next session. But here, if I try to understand any typical life insurance contract. So, broadly speaking, they are a kind of contracts between a life insurance company and one or more people right one or more people if it is with one probably it's a single uh, a single life uh, insurance policies otherwise we can have joint lives and group lives kind of insurance policies and a typical working of an insurance uh, business is more like policy holder he would be a uh, paying a premium either a single premium or regular premiums to the insurance company at regular intervals of time and uh, in turn in case there is some kind of a contingency that has occurred the contingency that is clearly specified in the wording of that policy if that particular contingency has occurred, the insurance company uh, will be paying the amount which is called as the benefit to the policyholders. And uh, so how do I typically compute the benefit? Now this is where the typical benefits which we see in any kind of life insurance policy fall under the two categories one the death related benefit the policy holder dies so the benefit needs to be paid to the dependents or the beneficiary of that particular policy and the second is on the survival there are a few types of benefits which are paid on the survival for a particular term so again how the pricing will come into picture corresponding to each one of them and along with that probably the same concept can go applicable to a near life kind of contingencies like health which have a similar kind of a pattern or the pricings can also be more and more applicable to non-life kind of policies different uh, kind of uh, benefit payment, different kinds of pricing mechanisms. But the simpler aspect is the benefit amount. Benefit amount is known in case of life insurance kind of policies to a large extent. Whereas the benefit amount is typically not known when we are looking at the general insurance kind of policies, right? So uh, probably slightly more simpler in terms of finding out the pricing is those policies where the benefit amounts are slightly known in advance. And when I'm looking at uh, much more into the world of life insurance, the simplest of all the different kinds of life insurance policies is the whole life. As the word itself is saying, the benefit which is called as sum assured that would be paid on the death of the policy holder and death is inevitable it can typically happen at any point in time so the benefit would be paid at some point in time or the other there is no time limit here for this policy whereas on the other side when we are talking about a term assurance kind of a policy it's again the sum assured whatever has been agreed upon that is paid on the death but this death should happen during a specific period only if the death happens after that specific period no benefit is going to be paid so that's a term assurance contract then there could be a few 
insurance contracts which are typically called as pure endowment kind of contract where again a sum assured would be paid but on survival for a specific term right if the death happens within that period nothing would be paid only if the person if the policy holder has survived at the end of that particular term the benefit is getting received by that person then we have endowment assurance two words coming into this the second and the third mix it together is an endowment assurance contract which means this is more and more applicable to a term but what it simply says is it's a combination of term assurance plus pure endowment means in case the person dies within the period there is uh, the benefit of the term assurance is coming into picture in case the person survives up to that particular at the end of that period the benefit that is equivalent to a pure assure a pure uh, endowment contract is typically paid so the benefit is paid either on the death during a particular term or on survival up to the end of the term right and probably uh, this benefit could be different from this benefit the death benefit could be different from survival benefit or they may be the same also so this is what is an endowment assurance policy then we also have a near life kind of a policy which is critical illness wherein what you see is again here there is a benefit here the benefit that is paid is on diagnosis diagnosis of some dreadful or critical illness or a critical disease and what diseases are applicable or what diseases are eligible it is very clearly specified in the wording of the policy so if at all a policy holder is diagnosed of any of the diseases that are there in the list a benefit which is a lump sum amount is typically paid towards the medical or towards uh, all these it's not a reimbursement of expenses it's again a sum assured that has been initially decided that is uh, the, that has to occur and the number of diseases are listed in a policy and the benefit is made the benefit payment is applicable either for whole of life or even it is could be for a specific period of time means the critical illness should occur during a specific period of time or it could be across a whole life now all these are different kinds of life insurance policies now what we are talking of is for these different kinds of life insurance policies how do i typically uh, do a pricing for them first of all how do i look out how much is the expected benefit how much is the expected benefit that is coming out of them so based on that i'll have a clarity in terms of how much do i need to charge as a premium for those kind of policies now this is where the concept of pricing where we initially start with the equation of value where we talk about the fair price what is the price what is the fair price of a particular contract here we try to look at important concepts like time value of money which talks about the present value of the future benefits that are going to be a uh, provided and the uncertainty that is associated with the payment right a probability of survival in some cases or probability of death in some cases if i have to provide a death benefit the person has to die if there has to be a survival benefit the person has to survive at the end of the period so the uncertainty that is attached to the payments which are going to be made in future 
depending on the death or survival of that person. So I have to really try using these concepts into my equation building. And here we also need to talk about when I'm looking at from a time value of money perspective, the rate of interest is a very important aspect because we can always borrow or borrow or invest at this particular rate of interest. And uh, there is a possibility that this rate of interest can be constant. Right? If it is constant, we call it as deterministic or it could very well be volatile or it could be a changing which means it is called as stochastic. To a large extent while pricing these kind of policies and all, though we can use a stochastic model, we generally rely on the deterministic itself. So which means we generally assume that the interest rate is constant, but still we can very well uh, go ahead in terms of stochastics also, but that is going to complicate the model. And whenever I'm having an interest rate effective effective compound interest rate per annum this is what we are denoting it as i whenever i am seeing the word i it is an effective compound interest rate per annum so on the top of it for the present value I'll uh, denote it as V, which is nothing but 1 divided by 1 plus I. This is what is a notation. Probably we actually use it as nu equal to 1 divided by 1 plus I, which is what we call as the discount factor, where I is the effective compound interest rate per annum. And just trying to bring in a few more terms just to... Uh, get uh, used to this uh, pricing mechanism whenever we are using this word ppx it's the probability right just recollecting it uh, uh, as a terminology it's a probability that a person whose current age is x is surviving until his age becomes x plus t right so that is what we are calling as tpx and this TPX, we are always denoting it as e to the power of minus integral 0 to t mu x plus s ds. Where mu is the force of mortality, right? Where mu is the force of mortality, we are saying that the probability that a person aged x is surviving for t more years until he gets an age of x plus t is tpx or in other words it is e to the power of minus uh, integral 0 to t mu x plus s ds and as an another uh, terminology we talk about tqs tqx probability that a person whose current age is x he dies by the time he gets x plus t age Right? By the time he gets an age of x plus t, what is the probability that he is no more alive? Now for that what we are saying, that value is nothing but I am taking it over a t period where I am assuming first of all spx. The person aged x is surviving until s more years. So when he has survived until that time, his age would have become mu x plus s. Now mu x plus s is talking about the force of mortality. By the time he reaches x plus s, he died. So this is what we call as TQX. So these are the two important formulas which we may have to uh, recollect from our uh, earlier uh, subject understanding. And similarly, a uh, very common notations are Px and Qx, wherein I am talking about 1 Px and 1 Qx. The probability that a person aged x is going to survive for one more year, probability that the person aged x is going to die in the next one year. Right? So, something which we need to be comfortable with. 
Now with this basic understanding, for a dip, what we will do is, for different kinds of policies, the whole life, the term life, pure endowment, endowment assurance, critical illness, for these different kinds of policies, let's look at how do I, uh, uh, how do I uh, look at the benefits, right? What is the random variable that is uh, associated with the benefit payment, right? How do I typically uh, come out with an equation for the benefit that needs to be paid? And once I know that it is a random variable, is there a way out for me to find out the expected value and the variance? In each of these cases, how do I compute the expected value and variance associated with the benefit for different kinds of policies? So that is what we are going to uh, cover as a part of our next session. All right.